We finally have Final Cut Pro for the iPad, but the question is, how fast is it compared to a Mac? So right here, I have an M2 MacBook Air, which has the same exact specs as the iPad. I have the latest version of Final Cut, and we are gonna see, can the iPad keep up? Now right here, I have my standard 4K test with film grain and LUTs applied. I'm gonna test a variety of footage, and I have my external Thunderbolt SSD connected to the iPad, and unfortunately, we cannot import Final Cut projects into the Final Cut version of iPad. You can only export it to the desktop version, so let's make a new project right here, and let's import from files. Here is that SSD. Let me go to PC test here, and it looks like there's no way to select the folder, so let's try to drop it in. Nope, that is a bummer, and there's a lot of limitations with this version. For example, there's no split view buttons right there, so Apple is limiting that. Let's open this side by side. I'll try to drag a folder this way, and no, are you kidding me? Now I have my project set up right here and I was looking through the color adjustments and effects and there's no way to put a LUT into here. So I wanted to make sure and I went through Apple support and it literally says you cannot put in custom LUTs at all, only one conversion LUT if you're working with raw footage that needs a color space adjustment. So I have to delete these LUTs here and that's a major downside for people that like working with LUTs. And I use them for almost all of my tests. So let's go ahead and export this. I'm gonna start my timer. And while this is exporting, look at this right here. Exporting might take a few minutes, but keep Final Cut Pro open until the export is complete. Now, I saw somebody online that said if they would try to switch out of the app, multitask, it would just stop the export. Whereas on a Mac, you can go do things in the background as you're waiting. Now, another crazy thing, I can't believe Apple did this, is that you cannot use an external SSD to edit off of. I showed you guys uh, the DaVinci Resolve for iPad where you can do that and they have a free version and with LumaFusion you can just buy it one time and you can also do that. Whereas with this iPad, it transfers everything to the iPad itself. So you have to have a lot of storage on your iPad and Apple will charge $1,100 to move up to two terabytes for the iPad. Whereas you can get one of these guys for $350 for a four terabyte model and you can use this with your iPad, quickly grab and move to a project on a Mac or a Windows PC. So they absolutely did this on purpose to limit the version for iPad and that is crazy. Now we're here at the export, we're about 45%. Let's check on the Mac. 55%, so it's a little bit ahead. And what's interesting is that this is the base model. It's $1,200, and the SSD here is actually quite a bit slower than working off of the internal on this iPad. And this thing's been on sale for $1,000 on Amazon altogether. We'll leave a link to that in the SSD in the description. Whereas the iPad, um, for the same config, it is also 1200, but when you factor in the keyboard for 350 bucks, and if you're gonna have the Apple Pencil, it is actually more expensive. All right, bam, the Mac is done. The iPad we're still waiting on. All right, there you go. That one is now done. So our MacBook Air took two minutes and 20 seconds compared to two minutes and 52 seconds on the iPad. And this is the easiest test without any LUTs, crazy. Now the next test that I wanna do is stabilizing some footage. So let's drag this down. As you guys could see, this is a clip from when I went out boating years ago. So let's play this back. Looks smooth on both, but it looks like the quality gets worse on the iPad as soon as I hit play. Let's switch it to full quality. I'm glad we have that option. Scrolling through, nice and crazy smooth on the Mac. On the iPad, we have this new play wheel, which I thought was awesome. And pretty smooth. I am getting some glitchiness, especially when I start, which is kind of weird because both these have M2 processors with eight gigs of RAM. I'm cutting this down to a one minute section to stabilize it. And Final Cut is super fast at this, even with 4K footage. So let's test it out on the Mac first. Dang, okay. 
It's transcoding us in the background. I guess I have enabled. That was literally nine seconds from the time I clicked it for a one minute clip. Look at that, it smoothed out the little bit of jitter I had um, controlling the drone. Nice and smooth. We do this all the time. Let's go in here. Guys, I look through every single thing here. There is no stabilization. I cannot believe this. Um, I searched online, searched in the manual. There is nothing for this at all. Final Cut is amazing at stabilizing. We like smooth clips and they didn't put it in. LumaFusion has it. Uh, DaVinci Resolve has it, and it is literally not in here. For our next test, I have some high frame rate 10 bit 4K footage right here in a 60 FPS timeline. Looks like it's playing back nice and smooth on both. Let's hit next, handling it with ease. So I went ahead and I retimed the clips. I did manual color adjustment to everything here. I also went into my uh, footage that was S log and I adjusted that as well. So this is a lot harder on the systems. It looks like both of them are nice and smooth. Let's put this into double speed here. No issues, the iPad is doing great. Now let's go ahead and export this one and see how it does. All right, so that was interesting. This is a shorter clip, only a minute and 20 seconds, but much harder. And the iPad took a minute and 30 seconds to do, whereas the MacBook took a minute and 33, slightly slower. Both of these are also fanless, so they're both kind of getting heated up. Uh, but you could see that with tougher footage, uh, it does take pretty much one to one instead of being three times faster or so, or twice as fast compared to real time. Now I'm trying to choose the next test, something that's a little harder, but looking through Canon RAW, Red RAW, none of that is able to be imported and edited on the iPad version like you can on the Mac. So we're gonna test ProRes RAW, which the M2 chip has specialized decoders and encoders for that. Took a while to get it transferred. We have 33 gigs here. I would say roughly four or five minutes. And even though I have a Thunderbolt SSD, if you guys saw my video in the past, the transfer speeds with Thunderbolt on the iPad is way slower than the MacBook, even though the internal SSD is faster, it's the same connection. It's just really bizarre. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the iPad because the battery's at 5%, uh, and this time it dropped by 35% uh, compared to only about 16, 17 on the MacBook here. Of course, it has a smaller battery built in. And the good news is that the footage is playing back super smoothly, no issues whatsoever. Now I have some corrections applied and we can go ahead and render this and we'll see how that goes. If you are getting some stuttering, how quick it is at background rendering. Interesting, everything's set up here exactly the same. It looks like the MacBook is going quite a bit faster uh, we have our percentage bar here, but on the iPad, we could just watch that little render line going away. And that took 56 seconds on the MacBook, very, very fast, but it took the iPad a minute and 45 seconds, quite a bit longer. So um, I went ahead and I unplugged it. I wanna let this thing cool down and I'll just double check. And the second run took a minute and 36 seconds with a cooled down iPad. Now, when I was re-rendering that, I noticed the screen dimmed, and I guess it makes sense with such a tiny, thin device where the chip is built in with that display. It's a lot more heat than even a fanless MacBook Air where the chip is separate from that screen. And for our last test, let's go ahead and export this and see how it does with ProRes. Oh my goodness, the MacBook is flying 50% compared to 13, 15, 17. Wow, all the settings are identical. This is having to render in real time and encode it to ProRes. The chipset and the encoders are the same. Just saw some dimming right there. Oh my goodness. So that was 37 seconds for the MacBook compared to a minute and 34, getting closer to three times as long with this tough test. Now, of course, for the easy stuff, it is very close and that is good, but once you're uh, editing for a while, or you're doing tougher footage, we definitely notice that difference, even with the same exact specs. And of course, with a MacBook, if you go with 16 gigs RAM and a faster SSD, 
that improves it even more so because we are limited by the SSD here. So overall, I think I'm more disappointed about the lack of features. Now we know why you can't go from Final Cut on Mac to the iPad version, because there's a ton of stuff missing. There's a lot that I didn't mention. Saw people posting online that you can't just connect it to an external display and have controls on the iPad and the footage on the display, you're limited to the app. You can't do split view. There's a lot of limitations that Apple put in here for a reason so that people still want to have the Mac version, use this more as a supplementary device. Uh, whereas with LumaFusion or Resolve, you can use an external SSD, you have stabilization, you have more tools. Um, so that sucks that they're charging five bucks a month for a non-pro app. It seems more like, uh, like iMovie on steroids than Final Cut Pro. We saw what uh, Blackmagic Design did with Resolve, and that's what we want, but this is just not the same kind of app. So you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. Maybe the video on Resolve, which you can get a free version of Resolve on iPad. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.